<laughs> That's when guys had real muscle. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, hey. Hi, I'm Dennis Gage. Welcome to my classic car. Well, out in California, Jay Leno's shop. It's always fun to be here. But lately, when I come out here, it seems to be kind of, you know, not the best weather. And, and yeah, Dennis just brings bad weather wherever he goes. <laughs> just that kind of guy. Not going to mince words, are you, Jay? When Dennis is right there, ho oh, ho, stormy clouds ahead. <laughs> well, today I want to talk about, I think, one of the most exciting cars of all time. Another Indiana-built car, the uh, Cord 812. Originally, this was going to be the baby Duesenberg. The idea was, I think Cord had this whole General Motors thing. Duesenberg at the top like Cadillac, then Corridor, Auburn, like Oldsmobile or Buick, then down to Auburn, like your Chevrolet, that kind of deal. Mm -hmm. It never quite came to fruition. Uh, so they built this separately as a cord rather than a, as a baby Duesenberg. It has a, a 288 cubic inch Lycoming engine, 288.6. I know there are a lot of <laughs> purists out there that get a little crazy. With it. A flathead eight built specifically for this car. And one of the most, I think, unique cars in, in American history. Front wheel drive, a lot of innovations, has a thing called a start X, which starts the car automatically if it stalls, and it, you start it by pushing in the clutch. Uh, it's front wheel drive, as I said, it's got this vacuum shift transmission, it's got a pre-selector box, and it's a car that was built on a budget. There was no money. Yeah, so yeah. consequently, even like, though this was an ultra high-end Mark, you know, in Duesenberg and all that, but there was no money at that but, time. But, you know, you find that a lot of, every time somebody builds a supercar, they have no money. They have no money. <laughs> Bugatti's really the only one that built a supercar that had money. Everybody else kind of scrapes nickels and dimes and puts yeah. together what they can to build their supercar. Uh, everything on this car was done on the cheap, and I don't mean, I just mean inexpensively, not, not poorly done. Mm -hmm. It just means there was no money. For example, when they road tested the car, the brakes overheated, and there was no way... Well, they couldn't come up with new brake drums, so they just drilled these holes, which would become iconic because everybody loves to look at that wheel cover. But that's why? And that's why, that's just, just, for just to cool the brakes, yeah. Everybody looks at the car and oohs and ahs it. Yeah. And when I drive it now, kids think it's some kind of custom it, well, George it Barish yeah. chop job. It does, or something it does. Like that, you know? Well, you know, it's, and, and the iconic part of it is really this nose. The coffin nose, yeah. The coffin nose. In fact, the real cord purists don't like, these are cord driving lamps, but they don't like them on here because they think it ruins the purity of the front end. But it's a real aeroplane design, very aerodynamic. I mean, it looks like the cabin of one of those Ford tri-motors, you know? Yeah, it does. The dashboard it is does. very aero-looking. Well, in the way the, uh, the front fenders are, they're, they're like skirts on landing gear. Right, exactly, exactly. And the way these open up, you open your headlights by cranking them. So they're manual? Manual, like that, there you go. And I prefer this because if it was an electric motor and it broke, ugh, it would just be a nightmare trying to fix it. These cars came in supercharged and unsupercharged form. This is an unsupercharged car, but these were so popular. Yeah. People love having those. They just those. look so cool. They look so cool that, uh, that they put them on there anyway. So <laughs> let's open the hood and take a look underneath. Wow. So, hmm. so it's a V8, and she's mounted this the other way around, right? Mounted the other mounted, way around. That's backwards. correct. We cheat a little bit. This has a thing called a generator. It's still a generator. It acts like an alternator. And you oh. can put out a lot more. Oh, wait, but, and it still fits in the same case and yeah, everything? Yeah, it's the same. This is a six volt electrical system. And I've kept it six volt. What's this thing up here? OK, that's your transmission. That's your vacuum shift. Oh, that is? Yeah. That's, yeah. that's kind of weird. And if you had any kind of vacuum leak problem. You ain't shifting. You're not shifting. But they were so beautiful, nobody ever threw any of them away. Just a very art deco car. And you can see everything is pretty crammed in there. It's almost like a modern engine compartment. You know, most cars of this period, you can almost stand in there and work on it. Yeah, this is, this is more this is, yeah. Everything is tight and it's in there. Now this car is called the Winchester and it has the fastback. But people complain because this trunk is so small that they made the Beverly, which came up like this, had a big bustle back on it. And it was more practical for carrying things. But well, it didn't it, look it, as cool. No, it didn't look as good. And, and I just love these two. Yeah. Little windows here. I like this better than the one pure oval window. It gives a little more style. It's just a, almost like a car of the future for yeah. 1930. Well, interior-wise, it's, it's just gorgeous too. I mean, it's so, yeah. uh, you know, it's snug. In fact, competing car dealers, Ford and Chevy and Oldsmobile dealers, would always. Are they dinging it? 
for the Well, they would always get some oversized person struggling to get in, you know, to show how uncomfortable <laughs> the car was and oh, how awful it was to get in. It terrible. A, a terrible car. But I noticed there. when you opened it, the, the other thing that's kind of interesting is, is how little space there is here. Yeah, not I mean, a lot of space. You, know, not you a lot do of space. have to yeah, kind of gotta, sneak in there. I think it's just one of the most beautiful cars ever. And it just looks like a custom car. Of course, it's not. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's not raining right now. So uh, It will. I'm sure it will. But it Let's take it for a ride. Does it break in the rain? We'll take it out and see how she goes. Cord was probably the most European American car ever built, certainly up to the 30s. This was a front wheel drive car. Front wheel drive car, a thing called a start X. With the start, you turn the key, you press the clutch in, and the car automatically starts when you put the clutch down. So it's almost akin to the Buick uh, gas pedal starter? Yeah, yeah, you have a pre-selector. What you do with this is you, this freed up this whole area here. Uh -huh. You had a flat floor, you had no gear lever here. These are all revolutionary ideas. So you put it in first gear like that. With the clutch in? With the clutch in. All right, now you pull away as you would any other gear. Okay, so, that so now, far it's acting like a normal manual like a transmission. No, like, like, like a normal manual transmission. But what you do with the pre-selector is, is you select your next gear. There's second. No okay. clutch. No clutch. Now when I put the clutch in, it shifts for you. So you do that, pre-select your gear. Push the clutch in. The next gear I'm going to want is third. Okay. Reselect it, and you go. But as you can see, it feels and drives much like a modern car, and plenty of pickup. Yeah. It's so nice riding. Oh, it's a wonderful driving car. Suspension is firm. It's not that billowy stuff like you had a lot of cars in right. the 30s. Size-wise, it's perfect. We'll pull over up here and I'll let you drive it. You can oh, see cool, it. yeah. I've never driven one of these. OK, okay clutch put, in. Put the clutch in. OK, move it over into first. Okay, and go. Regular clutch setup. Go ahead, yeah. Well, that's a, the clutch is right there, too. Yeah, yeah, right. All right, now. Now, just pre-select second. Don't touch the clutch. Just put it in second. And then now, push. Any, anytime you want to shift, just hold the clutch in. And I heard it. Okay, release the clutch. And continue motoring. Oh, yeah, lovely. <laughs> that is interesting. Feels good too. Oh, Man. Yeah, it's a nice driving car. 3rd gear has got some power. That is so cool. Yeah, just a different driving experience, you know. I'll shift her in a second? Yeah. Okay, press the clutch in. And right off we go. What a beautiful car. You know, since Dennis the Rain Man Gage is here today, <laughs> we took the cord out and it started to rain, so we came back. Because you don't want to drive classic cars no, in the no. rain unless you have to. And we're trying to think of some theme. So we thought we'd do Cars of Indiana. This is a premiere. This is a car almost nobody knows about. I didn't know about it. No, I didn't no, know. I, you know, I didn't really know about them until I, I found this one. But did you know, you, you knew that the Indiana was the largest car producing state. Yeah, Indiana time. rivaled Detroit. Yeah. And some of our greatest cars came out of Indiana. If you lived in Detroit, this was a foreign car because it was made <laughs> in another state. <laughs> foreign cars. You know, but uh, just a big T-head, luxurious, extremely well-built car, massive engine. I think it's 434, something uh, cubic inches, but only a six. But like a lot of old cars, and this is a problem, there aren't very many of these premieres. In fact, I've only found one other one like this. Parts break. This car was put away in the late 70s, early 80s because what had happened was the water pump had rotted out, wow. the radiator had gone, you see? I mean, we open this up, it's all just corroded inside, and consequently, well, you go drive around junkyards trying to find a water pump yes. from a Premier. Good luck. Ain't, not gonna gonna find, ain't gonna happen. 
So this is where technology actually helps the old car hobby. You know, it's easier now to get parts for these old cars than it was even 30, 40 years ago. Because well, you can create them. Because you can create them. So is this Premier original or is this thing been well, redone? Well, no, it's not original. It's old enough to be second generation old again. It was restored, I think, in the early 50s, mid 50s, mm. and used as an antique car. And then it was put away for so long that, oh, it looks original. People back in the 50s, when they were restoring these cars, weren't as concerned about originality as we are today. So he updated the ignition oh, yeah. by updating, that's Pierce Arrow 12, uh -huh. something from the 30s. So it was a 14, it was updated to a more modern ignition by the 30s. Um, so if anybody looked at that, they think it was original because that's also 70 years old. It looks pretty old. old. <laughs> pretty old, but uh, no, it's, but other than that, it's all stock, engine, transmission, wheels, tires, electrical system, all that is pretty much as it was. Did Premier make its own, they made their own engine, they made their own transmission? Yeah, they made their own everything. Premier wow. was an independent company. This was just a big, strong, dependable, luxury car. The seating really. setup is kind of interesting. Yeah, these seats fold down. Yeah, it's got these little jump seats, it's kind a seven of. seven passenger, yeah, yeah. I mean, people can really, I mean, you, you can go cruising in this thing. Oh, yeah. But the whole fam could go. I mean, it, and you know, it starts and drives like a modern car. I drive it in traffic. You have to be a bit careful. It's got the anti-stop brakes on it. So <laughs> it's not that much for brakes. But no, not much for brakes, just a two-wheel rear brakes, but that's okay. The transmission, it's got a lot of compression, so it's a big motor. You can use the transmission to slow you down. Obviously, it's not a freeway car. Uh -huh. Top speed in this car is probably 60, but I wouldn't want to beat it up at that. Uh, it'll cruise at 45 to 50, and that's about right. You know, the speed limit was 35 when this was built. So this would have been a big, fast car. But it's quite comfortable, you know, commanding view of the road. One of the nicest shifting cars, as soon as we get that water pump on, uh, we'll take it around the block and you can drive and see what it's like. But geez, it's just a nice, nice driving car. Well, and it's, I mean, it's big. It, it is a it's big It's long, car. it's tall. But this is the size cars were back in yeah. the day. It wasn't big for its day, but it was a big car. Well, so all we need is water pump, eh? We'll put that water pump on and we'll take it for a spin. Pretty straightforward basic car, nothing particularly innovative. Big heavy chassis, big durable motor, big strong transmission, you know, bulletproof electrics. Built to take a licking and keep on taking. Yeah, basically. So see, you're cruising along at a yeah. nice speed. I mean, this is a great tour car, you know, because it'll just run forever. It doesn't overheat. But you know, if you stay off the highway, you can drive it around as a normal car. It's very dependable. You run through the gears very normally. It shifts wonderfully. It's a nice shifting, nice driving car. You almost kind of forget you're in an old car after a while with this. It just drives and shifts so nicely. This is I'll let nice. You, I'll let you take it down here and you'll see. And for a heavy car, it actually steers pretty nicely. But here, take, give it a try. All right, I'll come around. A big mistake letting Dennis drive. This is a huge mistake on my part. It's a big car. <laughs> Smooth as you, but I'll get there. I'll get there. A little slower second or third. There you go. Nice. There you go. Very nice. Yeah. This is comfortable? Yeah, it's a big comfortable leather chair. It is. Drive in the living room. The equivalent is maybe driving a early 50s pickup truck. It's sturdy and it's strong, but... It does do that, yeah. yeah. Got a little bit of a buckboard uh, yeah, yeah. action. It actually steers pretty nice, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Considering, I mean, there's a bit of Ralph Cramden bus driver thing <laughs> going, but. To the moon, Alice. Yeah, we'll grab some lunch. I'm sure the chicken's ready now. So, hey, we went out cruising. The sun even came up. It's lunchtime. I don't know about this Rain Man thing. Let's eat chicken. 
The Jay Leno Ultimate Collection Volume 3 is here. This compilation's got everything from steam cars to supercars. And you never know what's going to happen when Jay and Dennis get together. Order yours today.